Good afternoon. Today we have Professor Paul, Associate Dean of Security and Computing at Eddie Cohen University. My name is Tan, Committee of SCS Student Chatter. It's great to welcome you to PSB Thank you Singapore Academy. Thank you. And first of all, what is cybersecurity and why is it so important for today's context? So cybersecurity is something that most people have heard of. Okay, it's in the news, it's a very popular subject at the moment. Correct. But it really has its foundation in traditional computing. Mm -hmm. So the concepts of software engineering, of networking, of systems analysis and design. So the very concepts that we've been teaching for the last 30, 40 years in terms of computing, IT, computer science, have now evolved to address the, the cyber security issues that we're now facing. So we're all very familiar with the issues of the day, mm -hmm. with hacking incidents, with systems being compromised, okay. with data being stolen. So cybersecurity is about how do we protect our infrastructure, our systems, and that can be the computers, it could be the mobile devices, but it's also with the move into the cloud, the mm -hmm. remote systems, and with the increase of what we call IoT, the other kinds of technology that we're now encountering in day-to-day -day life. Something as simple as the CCTV cameras, the photocopiers, the printers, our home access devices, our ADSL or fiber modems, they're all part of a global network of devices okay. and they're vulnerable to a whole range of attacks and incidents. So cybersecurity is about protecting those systems, protecting the infrastructure, but importantly, it also recognizes the human aspect. So humans play a significant part in this yes. and we need to recognize that humans not only create the systems that we're using and therefore introduce many of the errors or the bugs, but they're also the people who are driving the attacks. And so we need to think about the human factors in cybersecurity as well as the more traditional technical approach. Yes, got it. Thank you. And currently, ECU is partnering with PSB Academy to launch cybersecurity programs in Singapore at bachelor and postgraduate level. Mm -hmm. So why Singapore? So Singapore is obviously a significant hub. It's a major technology yeah, development correct. area. So there's obviously huge opportunity there. Mm -hmm. And as the use of technology increases, clearly there's going to be a risk of increased attacks. And we've heard about a few recent attacks in Singapore that have been particularly high profile. So there's yes. clearly a driving demand. But realistically, the demand is global. And so when you look across the world, the number of incidents, the number of attacks is growing across the entire globe. So it's not just a, uh, a problem that's focused on Australia or on Singapore, it is a global demand. Yeah. And so we're looking at opportunities to partner up with relevant partners, relevant organizations okay. who've got the access to instructors, the capability onshore, and a keen and enthusiastic um, student market. And so this is something that we've definitely got in Singapore. We've reached out, we've looked at the market, we've looked at the, um, the colleges, the schools that would contribute to the polytechnics, and clearly there is a demand for cyber, and it's not currently fully provisioned within Singapore. There's oh. relatively few opportunities really? to study cyber security. Yeah. So it was an obvious opportunity for us, and we've been teaching cyber for 15 years, 20 years as a discipline area, and so we're very well provisioned to be able to move into a, a market like Singapore, and PSB certainly offers the expertise, the facilities, and access to a network of academics who can deliver the training to a high quality in an onshore environment yeah. in Singapore. Yeah, it's great to hear that. And what, what are the knowledge and skills that the student will learn throughout the programs? And would it be sufficient? Would it be sufficient for students, uh, for graduates, to be industry ready? So, as I previously mentioned, there's a significant focus on having the core skills. So you need yes. to know about networking, you need to know about security, you need to know about the software engineering aspects. So you need a common set of skills to be successful in cyber. But we very rapidly move on yeah. to the more technically deep um, areas. So you could consider that we start off with a very broad foundation in computing areas and a few computer security issues before we begin to dive quite deep on specializations. Okay. Now that's more notable in the undergraduate course where mm. we have more capacity to cover a wider range of issues. But even in the postgraduate course, having covered the basic concepts of networking and a little bit of software, we also delve into 
very dedicated specific subject areas like ethical hacking mm -hmm. and computer forensics. So they're very much this, the technical skills that are being looked for in industry. But we also have to partner them with the professional skills. Mm. And people don't work in isolation anymore. So yes. the, the, the idealized model of a hacker sitting in a room on their own, hiding in the dark, typing away, is no longer the model of either the attacker okay. or the defender. So the students we're producing have to be able to work in teams. And so we build that in throughout the course, not only to get them to communicate, but to also work effectively as part of a team. Mm. Got it. So is it difficult to study cybersecurity? Does it require some strong mathematics and programming skills? So cybersecurity, like all courses, has levels of complexity. As yeah. I just mentioned, we have that breadth of knowledge and we have the depth of knowledge. So clearly you will need to pick up a number of deep technical skills okay. in order to do forensics, in order to do ethical hacking. We do cover off on some topic areas like cryptography. However, we don't focus on the deep mathematical principles. Mm -hmm. So you won't spend very long looking at integer factorization or elliptic curves. Yeah. We'll talk about them, but we're not going to examine the deep mathematics behind them. Mm -hmm. Realistically, cybersecurity is becoming a black box activity. So we take concepts like firewalls, intrusion detection, and yeah. cryptography, and we wrap them in a box. And yeah. we say that is a product, a device, a service. Mm. So you put Un unencrypted data into the box, out of it comes encrypted data. And from a cyber security perspective, what you need to know is what are the levels of security mm -hmm. and what are the implications of compromise. So if I choose a particular type of cryptography, I need to know that that is vulnerable or not vulnerable to different kinds of attack. Oh. So you gauge the security rather than spending many hours analyzing the mathematical algorithms behind it. Okay. It's not viable to do that. You'd need a, you know, a deep understanding of mathematics. You'd spend probably a best part of two years mm -hmm. studying the maths behind that. We don't want to encourage that sort of um, uh, skill or that kind of learning yeah. through our course. We want you to have a good understanding of what crypto is, its background and its application. Mm -hmm. It is an application technology. And a great example is blockchain. Yeah. Blockchain is a very modern, trendy buzzword. You can even find courses about it. But blockchain is just the application of cryptography to a particular problem. It's about creating a distributed ledger. Mm. And the concepts behind it, whilst buried in mathematics, are still simply cryptography based. And so we look at the application as opposed to the underlying mathematics. Mm. Thank you, Professor Paul. Uh, in your opinion, apart from uh, academic qualification, what are the attributes that the industry is looking for in graduates? So clearly technical skills are very important, yeah. but they're not the only thing that a graduate needs. And probably the most important aspect of a, a graduate that attributes is the ability to work as a team. So again, I mentioned earlier the importance of working collaboratively, yes. that you don't work in isolation, and that as a team player, you have to not only work within your own IT team, mm -hmm. but you also have to work with the wider teams within an organization. So if you're representing IT or you're part of a cybersecurity team, then you will have to interact with the lower members of staff, the, yeah. the, the normal members of the workforce. You'll need to engage with them. There might be training required. You might have to even help them with solving a security problem. You need to be able to communicate. You need to be able to work as a team. Yeah. And then you go to the complete other extreme and the senior managers, the chief executives. Yes they need to be able to liaise with the IT security team. Mm. They need to understand the risks. And as you can probably imagine, the language is very different. It's a much higher level, it's operational, it's strategic, it's about understanding the implications. It's a very different foci. And the other aspect is that there's also an element within cybersecurity that focuses on the human aspects. Okay. So cybersecurity focuses on the whole area of security. And a large part of that is human factor oriented. Mm. Humans develop the systems that get compromised. Mm. Humans implement the computers that get affected. And humans operate and use those equipment, those equipment or devices. And so having a person who can talk with other people, examine issues, and even try and trick people into making mistakes cool. is a very powerful skill set. There's a whole area of cyber looking at social engineering, mm. convincing people to give you information. And we always put our white hat on because we are the good guys, yeah. as opposed to the black hat hackers who are trying to corrupt the system, steal information. And by using our skill sets, 
we can hopefully find the problems in systems, whether it is technical or human, yeah. and then solve that particular problem, either through education or through the application of technology. Mm, got it. And uh, lastly, uh, could you please share some advice to those who are keen on cybersecurity? So obviously, do it. It's a great area to move into. I've made my career out of cybersecurity, yeah. as have many others. But as you move into cybersecurity, it is an area that is constantly evolving. So it's very rewarding, there's enormous potential, and there's massive global demand for cybersecurity practitioners. Mm. But only for those who are committed to the cause. You have to study, you have to keep your skills refreshed. So you've got to continue with lifelong learning, engage with the wider community, joining hacker conventions, joining conferences, attending workshops to build your skills, and importantly, to build your networks. And in this mm. profession, it's the networks that are absolutely key. So definitely move into the cyber area if you've got a passion for it and you can see yourself spending your life because it will be a very rewarding profession. Wow, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Paul. So I um, really appreciate you taking time for me to join uh, this uh, interview. And now I'm very convinced to join the course. I hope to see you very soon. Thank you very much for your thank time you. as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.